G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. The way my dry composting toilet works is that when the plastic bucket is full, or at least sufficiently full that the pile tickles your bum, a certain amount of water, perhaps four or five litres, is mixed there within by the use of a stirring stick. And then one goeth prospecting, seeking a convenient rabbit warren entrance down which to pour the offering from the shit pit and all other things being equal this particular nest entrance would be a good candidate I discovered this particular nest entrance while clearing this thicket of Melaleuca alternifolia and I was clearing that Melaleuca alternifolia or tea tree because this is pretty much where the yurt is intended to go and so all things are not equal as regards that their rabbit burrow it's not actually going to be suitable as a place down which for me to pour my sewage not with the fact that it's going to be right beside my daughter's yurt. So I went back to prospecting, mostly out beyond the bounds of the brush cut clearing, on the grounds that most of the available spots inside the clearing have already been used, and that's why they have wild tomato plants appearing on that spot. However, on the theory that where there's rabbits there may in fact be carnivores, over this away not actually so very far from the rabbit burrow, look at this. It's a bloody cave compared to a rabbit burrow. Literally, it's a foot. By eight inches. And for a sense of perspective, if we come over here, the actual more or less standard size for a rabbit burrow having been poor and turds down rabbit burrows for 30 odd years, the actual burrow of the feral rabbit is closer to 6 inches by 6 inches, narrowing down to 4 inches, not far in. So if that's a normal rabbit burrow then this cave here is probably the lair of a hare or perhaps a fox. I'd love it if it was a wombat but I don't think that's big enough. So I'm going to arbitrarily decide that this is the entrance burrow probably to a fox which was hoping to hunt the rabbits that live up the hill. And. Uh, during the recent wet period, while the trap rock has been in subsoil liquefaction mode, the fox has taken advantage of that to remove quite a prodigious quantity of spoil with the overburden 
trailing off 118, 120 centimetres, 46 inches downhill of the hole, as well as forming a blanket on the uphill side. And we're talking 10 centimetres or four inches deep. Yeah, I don't think that's rabbits. I'm going to say that's foxes. So anyway, let's hope I don't finish up fighting a shit-covered fox with a stick. Because this is my manoeuvre. There we go. No fox. No rabbit. No hare. But anyway, that's what the council calls a dry composting toilet in good functional order. There's no runoff from it. There's no odour from it, there's no pest or disease, it doesn't attract flies and it complies with the Pastures and Protection Board obligation to persecute noxious feral pests wherever they be found. Such is Australia's ongoing war against noxious feral Europeon imports. Warbles on lot to YouTube. Ciao!